Oh, wow, you see that gator right there? There's always something to do in Greater Fort Lauderdale. Today on Life on the Water, Captain Brandon Simmons is headed into the Everglades in search of peacock bass. Nice fish. Oh, a beautiful Fort Lauderdale peacock bass. And he will get some wind in his hair exploring the backcountry in a classic Florida airboat. West Marines Life on the Water, presented by Costa Custom Boats. Greater Fort Lauderdale is a dream destination for so many reasons. Whether you want to get out on your 34-foot Costa Custom boat in search of sailfish. That's a big one, dude. Nice fish. Or run the 26 around inlet bridges for snook. Got one. Nice. The sport fisherman has plenty of options as you cruise past the 15th Street Marina and out towards the Atlantic Ocean. The water is a way of life for all the residents of Greater Fort Lauderdale. Awesome, He's jumping. Man. From the Pompano Beach Fisher Family Pier, where you can see manatee swimming along the beach while you fish, to the 300 miles of canals that create their own transit system for boating enthusiasts from around the world. Today, Brandon is headed inland, where the amazing Everglades begin. It's here at Everglades Holiday Park that he is meeting up with someone who makes her life on the water, chasing after the freshwater fish that roam these shallow waters. The Everglades, it's just such a beautiful place to get up into and just immerse yourself into what old Florida really used to be like. Up in the northern part of the Everglades, you start to get into that fresh water and you get into this really shallow, just marsh water. There's always going to be this little cut into a back alley that, you, you know, in the back of your head, you're like, man, if I just had a smaller boat or a kayak, I could get back in there and, you know, and see if that trophy fish is laid up back where nobody can really get to except for you. Beautiful day in Fort Lauderdale, Debbie. You know it. This is like more your style, huh? This is, yes. I'm so excited to get out here, see if we can get some bass. Oh yeah, I'm excited. Looking I'm, forward to it. I yeah. would love to catch a peacock. That would be awesome. You gotta do it. That's it, that's You're one. always out there on the salt water. I it's know. time to get fresh. It's time to get fresh. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Debbie Hansen moved to South Florida to take advantage of the vast fisheries here and the ability to fish every day of the year. One of my favorite places to fish is the Everglades. It's one of the most unique ecosystems on the entire planet. The best ways to get in the Everglades are really smaller vessels that give you access to all those little nooks and crannies, all those spots that are really tight and hard to get into. That's where the biggest fish are. That's where the, the most life is. And it's just amazing to get back into some of these areas and get on such a variety of fish. All right, well, let's do it. Let's do it. It's beautiful out here in the Everglades, huh? What do these fish really like to hang out on, Debbie? They're either right back in that, the vegetation, those lily pads, or anywhere you can find these little creeks that filter into the canals. Oh, look at all those fish. This is cool, yeah, it's like a lazy so river. Awesome. <laughs> Just gotta let the current take you go with the flow. I made it. This looks like bass country. People are actually coming from all over the world to catch a peacock bass. And the Florida Fish and Wildlife actually stocked a lot of areas with these peacock bass to just help keep balance you know, in the estuaries. And it's helped a ton with the community, it's helped a ton with fishing guides, it's helped a ton with people who just wanna get out on the weekends and cast a line and you know, actually catch some fish and have a good time. Come on, bass! Right? Come on, bassy, bassy, bassy! It looks fishy back here, Oh yeah, it? nice and shallow. That water's gotta be warmer up in here. 
You seeing any of those deep holes, those deep pockets over your way, Brandon? No, it's kind of shallow here. It looks like there's some deeper holes out off of this side, though. Debbie is just so knowledgeable when it comes to the Everglades and peacock bass fishing. She lives those waters. That's her life on the water, is, is the west coast of Florida Everglades. Pretty amazing. Nope. We're pretty blessed to have the Everglades in our state here. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. You know, it's, it's, in my opinion, the best world, you know, national park there is out of all of them in my... Oh, Debbie! <laughs> <laughs> I missed him again! Oh. Alright, I gotta pay more attention. West Marine's Life on the Water, presented by Costa Custom Boats, is brought to you by West Marine, boaters serving boaters. Costa Custom Boats. Pelican Kayaks. Smith's Knives, the edge experts. The Riverside Hotel on Las Olas Boulevard. And by Simrad. The iconic shoreline of Greater Fort Lauderdale draws millions of visitors every year, and Captain Brandon Simmons is in his comfort zone when he's driving his 34-foot Costa Custom boat out into the deep blue sea. But today, he's moved to the other extreme and launched his Pelican kayak into the shallow waters of the Everglades that lie just 20 minutes inland in search of his first South Florida peacock bass. I'm like a leaf in the wind out here, <laughs> just blowing around. South Florida guide Debbie Hansen has brought Brandon out onto a large flat where the wind can blow them across and allow them to cast at numerous pockets of opportunity. Woo, got one! Yes! Nice! Here he comes. Look at that! Woo! What? In the That's air. a good one! Yes! Oh my gosh! Awesome, Debbie! Beautiful fish. All right. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Pretty sure. That wind is blowing, it's bringing down the water temperatures, and we had a cold front that just came through. We knew the water was gonna be warmer by that pump station. It was also a little bit deeper. There was a drop off there. They love to hang out near rocks because those rocks hold heat. So I'm always looking for rocks. That's a key distinguishing feature in terms of peacock bass habitat. There we got him on him. Yes! Oh, Woohoohoo! Oh, I got it. Oh. Nice peacock! Yes! Woohoohoo! Woo! Nice job! He hammered awesome. that thing too, huh? Yeah, he did! You hooked a fish and I hooked a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, beautiful peacock. That is such a cool fish, man. Just gorgeous. Absolutely. Whoop, there he goes. Successfully outfishing me today. Oh, wow, you see that gator right there? Oh, yeah. What do you think, six, seven? Yeah, for sure. He's got a pretty, pretty good sized head on him, honestly. <laughs> the Everglades Holiday Park. It's a big giant park. There's uh, tons of airboat rides and airboat tours going on and they have this huge discharge station where they're basically pumping water, you know, into the Everglades at any given time. You know, it's warmer water. The fish, they could kind of just be more comfortable. Yeah, I just had a thump. There you go, woo! Uh -huh. See if I can keep them tight. Peacock bass are crazy looking fish, you know, they're, they're actually in the cichlid family and you can find them all over, you know, the, the side ditches and back canals of Fort Lauderdale or even up into the Everglades. Oh man. Nice! I've never had the opportunity to catch one of these. Never really had anyone bring me to a place to catch one of these. I didn't want to say anything earlier. 
So that's my first peacock bass. I didn't want to jinx it, but. Really? I Your just, first peacock bass ever? Ever, ever. First oh one I've gosh. ever caught, for sure. It's always cool when you catch your first fish. It's just one of those marks on the bucket list. It's like, yes, boom, another new species. Super pretty. It's crazy the red that they have all over them, yeah. you know? Yeah, how brightly colored mm -hmm. they are. Oh, there he goes. Yes! <laughs> As a guide, it's one of the most exciting things and one of the most rewarding things when you're out there on the water and you get to see someone catch the first of a new species. Yeah! That's one of the reasons why I do what I do is because every day I get out there and I see the smiles on people's faces, I see that joy, and that's what it's all about. Nice! Nice! Check it out, Debbie! Sweet! Hook so fell cool. right out of his mouth. They almost have the blue like the red fish too, you know? On that end, end of the tail there, the reds get that real vibrant blue. Yeah, that real vibrant mm -hmm. reddish color and then the blue right on the tip. Yeah, exactly. So pretty. Pretty fish. Splash me See, in the face. might have to take a break from sail fishing every once I, in a while I'm to down. chase peacocks. Yeah, for sure. No, this is a great time. <laughs> Back in the day, you used to just go in the closet, pick out any shirt you could find, an old dirty shirt, throw it on, hop on the boat, and go fishing for the day. By the time you'd get home, you were probably sunburned all up and down your arms, the back of your neck, your ears, and everything and all the above. These new brands like Scales have really stepped it up a notch. You've got these lightweight, very comfortable and breathable shirts that are also very sun protectant. They keep the sun off of your arms. They've even got hoods on some of them to keep the sun off the back of your neck, off of your ears, and keep you protected and cool while you're spending the day on the water. For somebody like me who's a charter guide and I spend day in and day out on the water, I want to make sure that I'm protected. I want to make sure that the sun is not going to burn me every single day. Sunscreen can only do so much. I can only apply it so many times throughout the day. I know with these new scale shirts, I'm going to be protected and cool and ready to go day in and day out. I'm just letting my shiner drop right off that edge of that vegetation right over there. Yeah, right. That's where you got hit, Yeah, right? that's where I got that last one for sure. I feel like that little pocket right there is, is definitely... Yeah, it's a pretty good pocket. Fishing with live baits with those shiners, you know, it really reminded me of fishing for snook with pilchards. You know, you want to get your bait out there and let them have some free reign to kind of swim around wherever he's going. You don't want to keep them too tight. And as soon as a fish picks it up, your line that's slack in the water is going to start to move and kind of straighten out. And that's the first indicator that, you know, you've got a bite. Oscar! Nice! Yep, it's another type of cichlid. Let this thing go, huh? I love fishing in South Florida all the time just because of the variety of species that we have. Oh yeah! The saltwater opportunities, the freshwater opportunities, offshore, inshore, freshwater, you name it, you can chase it. Nice Oscar. Oscar, huh? Super hard fighting little guys. Pretty noisy, you know, there's airboats coming in and out. You've got a lot of stuff going on there in the holiday park. But that did not seem to affect the fish at all. You know, we just kind of bounced around a little bit and we were still having some pretty good luck. You ever been on an airboat? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's really neat to get back into the Everglades and just see all the wildlife. Oh, look at that. Check this gar out. Oh, nice. Is that a crappie? I think so. No way. It is a nice crappie. I kind of want to eat it, but you know, they're not terribly big and, and they're, we weren't expecting to catch a ton of them, so we were just letting them go. You know, if somebody like me needs about 10 of those fish to you know, eat a good dinner. So that's my first crappie. 
Your first my crappie. First one. Your first black crappie. Yeah. Knocking new stuff there out you go. on the daily. Look at them in the sun there. And people eat these, huh? They are a good freshwater fish to eat, yep. Ooh, healthy. There he goes. Cool. I was so blessed to have a grandfather who took me fishing when I was young, and now I feel like I'm paying it forward, given all those experiences I had with him when I was a young girl. So it just, <laughs> it means that much more to me. Get out of there! Ah, oh, Debbie! Oh, he's in the reeds! So that's part of South Florida, just coming here and enjoy all of these experiences on the water. Heck yeah! I'm coming, I'm coming! Another nice peacock. He brought you back in the reeds too, huh? He's warm too from the water. You can tell that water is warmer here. Yeah. Just pretty, so pretty. Big old Oop. brute. They look so mean. They look like a <laughs> mad fish. Oop. Right here by all the airboats. They ain't scared of no noise, huh? Nope, it doesn't seem to affect them one bit. I think it's more about the water and the cold and the temperature. Yep. Go! Oh! <laughs> Go on, Debbie! Woo! Check it out, Debbie. A beautiful Fort Lauderdale peacock wow. bass. Wow, gorgeous. That is awesome. Awesome stuff, Brandon. Oh, That's man. just awesome. Look at the colors on this guy. He's what everybody come out here for to catch, basically, yeah. I mean, the peacock bass is it. That's the and trophy. And they serve such an important purpose in our ecosystem, so. Absolutely. Thanks for playing today, buddy. We'll let you go. So cool. Awesome. Down into the reeds he goes. So awesome. Woo! High five! <laughs> Heck yeah. West Marine's Life on the Water, presented by Costa Custom Boats, is brought to you by Visit Lauderdale, everyone under the sun. Scales, every degree of water. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. Rely on batteries, challenge your limits. Waypoint TV, the destination for outdoor entertainment. And by Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Woohoo! Yeah? Nice. Ah, uh, look at this. Another nice peacock. Yeah, that's beautiful. The males are the ones that have the big. Not the, on their head. The heads, big forehead. Big head, Almost yeah. like a mahi, huh? Like a bull mahi. He's got the big bull knot. Yep. Brandon okay. Simmons and Debbie Hansen have been having a productive oh, day in the Everglades. So treating themselves to a classic airboat ride is the perfect way to round out the experience. Brayden Escobar has been guiding people of all ages for over 10 years and loves to share his knowledge of the unique ecosystem. Welcome to the Everglades. Thank you. I'm going to Thanks. be your host and driver today. Awesome. So hopefully we're going to go deep into the heart of the Everglades and see a few things of interest and learn a little bit about the Everglades and conservation out Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Sounds you ready? great. Yeah, man, Fantastic. I'm ready. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Show me what it's all about. All right. Come on in on the boat. Being able to spend time out there in the Everglades and just see how special this place really is, I think it leaves you with you know, a sense of almost protection. Like we have to keep this place the way it is. Conserving the life that's been here for two to 300,000 years, we should be able to preserve this incredible, unique, only type of wetland this big in the world. The largest river in North America of slow moving water because at one point it was 80 miles wide. We've lost already about half of it. Let's try to preserve the half that we still have. Right here, the grass is very high because of the amount of water here is found year round right. instead of the interior, which goes through droughts. This grass grow, has grown higher. Right. The roots are a filtering system. They filter out a lot of the heavy metals. They keep a balance in the water because you have a lot of lead, mercury, copper right. that is naturally occurring, and this helps make the water more sustainable for life. This is drinking water of about 12 million people in South Florida. Right. It also is the life 
or the support system for a lot of the alligators. And because there's a lot of fish, turtles, and food, which uh, you have more alligators here where you're going to have water year-round, the population is going to thin out. Once we get in the interior, usually the water is clear in a lot of places. You'll notice there's not a lot of fish, mm -hmm. so there's not a lot for the alligators to eat. They're out there, but there's just the, pop the density is a lot less than it is here in the canal. I'm primarily accustomed to fishing closer to the western edge of the Everglades, so to come here just two hours away from where I live and get out on the airboats and experience the Everglades on this side, it, it was just fantastic. I loved it. I've had a blast being able to be in Fort Lauderdale and, and get to hang out with somebody like Debbie Hansen, who is just awesome when it comes to anything fishing or life on the water. We've done a ton of things. We've been able to eat at some great restaurants and just get to hang out and have a good time. I want to come back because I don't feel like I could ever see everything that Fort Lauderdale has to offer. There's always going to be something new, some new experience, or whether it be fishing or just the city. And it's, it's definitely somewhere I'll be back.